So in the world of midstream, AST or above ground storage tanks have unique challenges when they're built, especially from a corrosion perspective. This is true when you look at new builds or new construction tanks, as well as repair tanks that often have to be taken out of service on a set interval uh, time frame. So some of the repairs that you typically see with these AST tanks is mechanical repairs. You may have to fix uh, a leaking seal. You may have to fix some foam piping or make sure the piping's in code. And in some cases, you have to replace steel and fix tank appurtenances. So today we're going to highlight some best practices around corrosion protection. And I'm joined today by Brian McHale. He's a 20-year Carboline veteran. He's been solving problems for the midstream and other industries for a long time based in the Northeast U.S. So Brian, you've recently supported a, a tank repair project that had you know, several challenging elements. The scenario was a midstream operator. The project was located in the Northeast. Tell us a little bit about the project. Talk about the scope of work. Yes, thanks, Doug. The project located in the Northeast U.S. was a tank that was getting a full API 653 inspection. And as a result of that, it needed a number of mechanical repairs. Uh, first, they found the roof needed to be replaced and also the entire floor was needing replacement due to underside corrosion. Uh, we were consulted for our problem solving skills, our technical ability, and our service, not just locally, but throughout the United States. What are some of the things you consider with, with all your experience when you're pulled into a situation like this and asked to evaluate coatings? Because we know there's many and you have a lot of options. So what are some of the things that you look at? Yeah, first, when we talk with the tank owner, we're looking at service life. We want to make sure that our expectations and their expectations are aligned. For a lot of these API 653 inspection intervals, they're looking at 10, 20 year cycles. So long term solutions are usually what these tank engineers have in mind. A couple other things we look at when we're looking at a tank is one, the environmental challenges. Is the tank located somewhere where weather is going to affect it, extreme weather? In the Northeast, we're always on the lookout when that project's going to be done, our cold temperature um, products going to be needed, and also scheduling. A lot of times when these tanks are taken out of service, they want them back pretty quickly, some sooner than others. So with scheduling, selection of protective coatings and linings with quick cure is almost always needed. So those are a few of the things we look at. Yeah, good summary there. So this was obviously a complete tank repair, meaning there was repair done on the external systems, tank roof, as you mentioned, tank floor. Let's talk first about the external systems. Maybe you can comment on why the materials that were used were selected. Okay, first, there, this tank required a new roof. And with the repairs and mechanical, ripping out the existing roof starting in the summer, this project was going to go into the winter before a new roof would be installed and coated. So with scheduling and selection of the coatings, we selected a low temperature system for the field. But what we also did is consult with this tank owner and have the steel come in with a pre-construction primer of our Carbo Weld 11. In addition to ha having that specified, we made sure we were on site providing our service so that steel fabricator could install our coating correctly and had the confidence to make sure it was being done right. And that was done in a different location of the U.S., then shipped up to the Northeast where it was put on. Next, the other part of the system, we have a tank roof dam procedure. This tank and this tank owner has a particular affinity for water to collect in the perimeter areas. There's bird baths, ponding, and in the past, these, these areas were subject to severe corrosion, metal loss, and steel replacement. So we came up with a system 
that uses our phenoline tank shield at these areas about 24 inches in from the side shell on the roof and then we top coat with our polyurethane top coat this is shown to hold up extremely well with little to no corrosion in the long run using an immersion lining at those areas and tying that into our existing coating system on the exterior tank ring base plate so where the steel meets the sits on the concrete pad we had a another system which we call our moisture vapor flexible reinforced system this utilizes a flexible epoxy with backer rod polypropylene fabric and then the semstone 805 flexible epoxy encapsulated in that which goes over the tank ring and concrete base this system is designed to prevent moisture penetrating under the tank for the tank floor and reduce underside corrosion so what we also do when we're installing this system is we'll repair the concrete base and to ensure that any moisture or water is flowing away from the tank and it's not going to pond right at that ring wall where moisture will penetrate or moisture vapor will get in so this system is proven to be very effective much more effective than caulks which are usually replaced every couple years at best and we have a 15-year case history with this uh tank owner in place where it looks as the day as good as it was installed so very effective means of preventing underside corrosion for the steel tank floor yeah, good stuff there. And, and as you may know, Brian's talking about the tank shine area. Sometimes in, in those area between the steel and the pad, you know, you could have one to two inches, you know, the tank over time, the plates will move. So having a product like you talked about, very important and, and good summary there. So you talked about a little bit about lining systems that were used for the roof. Let's, let's shift gears and talk about the internal repair system. This had a unique scenario. You mentioned you're in the Northeast. There's some environmental challenges. At, at parts of the project, we were looking at 30 to 50 degrees F, and so some challenges there. Why don't you walk us through the, the lining system that was used and, and a little bit about that part of the project? Sure. So for the lining, we utilized our phenoline tank shield system. So this, of course, was in accordance with API 652. Although a new steel bottom was installed, the need and use of 100% solids epoxy, and in particular the feline tank shield, was selected because it can cure down to 35 degrees. And being 100% solids, it can be applied in a single coat. So there are some real advantages there to using a classic thin film two or three coat system. What's also unique about this system in the Northeast, we use our feline 311 holding primer which cures down to 20 degrees F. With that, in cold temperatures, the contractor is able to blast in prime each day. And with fairly cold weather, be able to continue to work as long as, you know, we're still five degrees above the dew point. But being able to cure at 20 degrees enables us not to bring in heat or DH, saving that tank owner a lot of money and what we did was with this application being done in december we after the tank was blasted and primed and vacuumed we had a good day above 35 degrees and that's when we applied the feline tank shield all right good summary there brian obviously you had a lot of involvement during the process supporting both the owner and the applicator and the goal here was to give the owner a system that, that was going to last so two questions for you what sort of service life can we expect from the systems that were provided and installed? And then secondly, as part of this, there's obviously quality and quality con control checks. Um, what were some of those things that were done to help ensure that the lining and coating systems installed were going to last the recommended interval? Uh, great question there on service life. So service life expectancy for us is generally about 20 years for an inspection interval 
that these linings should be lasting. In my career, I've seen linings that last 30 years being properly installed. I've seen some last a little less, depending on how severe the environment is. But 20 years is what uh, these tank owners should be getting. As far as quality control, um, we assisted, and specific to this job, we were on site at key hold points providing tech service. Some of those hold points are, we're there at the initial surface preparation, so we all agree on make sure the blast cleanliness profile is what is recommended, and we're there to assist inspectors, if there are inspectors on the job, to make sure everybody's on the same page. We're also there in application to make sure the contractor understands how to apply it correctly and any product limitations that we may have. And of course, we're there for final inspection to check the film thickness, make sure we've got the properly specified film thickness there. Holiday tests and repairs, we like to witness that or make sure the inspectors witness that and it's being performed correctly. And of course, before the tank is given back to the owner, we want to do cure testing to make sure the lining is adequately cured and ready for chemical service. So as far as a final report and documentation, Carboline puts together a summary of when we were out on site with all the documentation. We put that into a final report, give that to the tank owner, and then he has a report for his files on the lining. This is important to document because in this industry, we've come across countless tanks that there is no history of what lining is in that tank, when it was done, and who did it. Very important when you're switching out services to make sure that, that lining is compatible with the next service environment. You never know who the next uh, terminal owner or tank owner or what product is going to go in that tank. So very important to uh, have some documentation on that. Yeah, good summary there on the record keeping and how vital that is. As we know, like you mentioned, there's a lot of cases we've seen over the years that haven't had that and it's created some challenges. So I think a really a key and integral part of, of the project that you were able to help support. So Brian, enjoyed talking to you today about this, this uh, tank history that we had and look forward to solving some more corrosion problems with you here in the future. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for having me. 